How many of you have ever met someone who says that they just absolutely hate math? Maybe you are that person. Mathematics has built a reputation for being a very abstract subject, which has led many people to stay as far away from it as possible. However, math is a fundamental topic which shows up in so many different fields. But if math is so important, then why do so many people hate it? The answer is simple. It's because of the way our educational system presents the topic. From a young age, students are being taught to simply memorize a series of patterns and formulas, and this ends up fostering a mechanistic view of mathematics in their minds. For these students, all math is is the process of plugging numbers into formulas. For example, consider basic addition. In the first grade, we all learned how to add numbers. You line them up, you start in the rightmost column, you add the digits, if you get something greater than or equal to 10, you carry the one, you continue adding, and you repeat, you repeat this algorithm. Here's the problem. If I were to ask a student, why do you have to carry the one? They would simply look at me and say, because my teacher said so. This is the heart of the problem with math education. Students are not learning through their own curiosity, experimentation, or understanding. Instead, they are depending on their teachers to tell them exactly how to solve any given problem. Truly, for these students, math is just plugging in numbers into equations and spitting out answers. However, math is so much more than this. As Galileo Galilei once said, math is the language with which God has written the universe. Here, I have identified two main problems with math education. The first is that students are simply learning how to memorize, not how to analyze. And the second is that students are intimidated by math. These two problems are entirely related. Students are intimidated because they lack a sense of deep understanding. If instead we were able to get students to learn the deep intuition behind the concepts that they're learning in class, then they would no longer feel, fear math, and they would begin to embrace its utility. Now, how can we actually go about fixing this problem? My solution is to offer students an alternate option, starting at the middle school level, a problem-solving class. Now, you may be thinking that this sounds very similar to a math class. So to understand the difference, let us turn to the very definition of problem-solving. When I was doing my research, I went through many different definitions, some better than others, and today, I have two which I would like to share with you. The first is right here. This source defined problem solving as when you are presented with a math problem and you have to figure out a way to answer the question that the problem is asking you. If you look at the picture of the boy on the slide, that is the exact same face I had when I saw this definition. Math is, or problem solving is not just the way that you get an A on your math test. In fact, problem solving is completely independent from mathematics. The reason why one so often associates the two is that when a problem solver is giving a solution to a problem, he will express it in the language of mathematics. And that is because math lends itself to quantifying the real world, which is something that we always must do when we present a solution to a real world problem. However, I prefer a definition of problem solving that does not mention math at all. And that brings me to the second definition. Problem solving is engaging in a task for which the solution is not known in advance. This short but sweet definition fully encapsulates the spirit of problem solving. Just diving into a question, even if you don't know that you will get an answer, even if you're afraid of being wrong, you try anyways. In this definition, I would like to point out one word in particular, and that is engaging. When you have a definition this short, every single word is incredibly potent. The word engaging stood out to me because when I'm problem solving, I truly feel as though I'm engaging all of my senses into the task at hand. It's almost like there's a sense of discovery. Every new problem is a chance to find something new. And this is what I find to be so exciting about problem solving. But I digress. Now that we know the difference between math and problem solving, we can see how the structure of the two classes would differ. In a math class, students are taught how to solve very specific sets of problems. In other words, the math is taught first, and then students are given problems later to help reinforce the taught material. However, in a problem-solving class, students begin with a set of problems for which they must discover the solutions themselves. 
These solutions will often involve mathematics, but the key distinction here is that the students are learning how to face the problems on their own, and they develop the math around their work. When the math is discovered in this way, it feels so much more natural and applicable to the real world than when it's obviously artificial and your teacher is just trying to get you to practice the latest formula that you learned that week. Obviously, this type of a class would be much more difficult than your typical math class, as it would demand great creativity from the students. However, this is not unfair to ask. Today, adults in the workplace are expected to have this creativity. So if we begin to teach this skill to students from a young age, it would really not be such a bad thing. Now, I'd like to give you an example of how problem solvers use mathematics to make astounding discoveries. To begin, I will have to define to you what a fractal is. Typically studied in the university setting, a fractal is a geometric shape, which, when zoomed in upon, is just a smaller version of itself. We call this feature self-similarity. For a visual representation of what I'm describing, consider the tree on your left. If you were to zoom in on any one branch of this tree, you would just find another branch that's smaller, but that looks exactly the same, or if not very close to, the original branch. Now consider the animation on the right, which actually shows the process of zooming in on a fractal. As you can see, no matter how long you zoom in for, you will always end up with your original shape. Now I know what you're all thinking. This math seems so useless. I mean, how could it ever help anyone other than those crazy mathematicians who are obsessed with these creepy looking trees? Well, the job of a problem solver is to observe a pattern and to discover a mathematical connection so as to deeply analyze what is really going on. Recently, researchers in Germany were studying cells when they noticed a strange pattern, a fractal pattern. Upon further investigation, they realized that this pattern wasn't showing up in all cells, only a certain subset, cells that were in the process of developing cancer. That is to say, completely healthy cells did not exhibit this pattern, nor did cells that had been completely infected with cancer. Now, mathematicians are hoping to use this form of fractal analysis to target infected cells before they can become deadly and take corrective action against it. However, this would have never been possible without a problem solver making a connection between the two seemingly disparate fields of fractal geometry and biology. This is just one of so many examples of where problem solvers have used math to model nature and then have applied these models to tackle some of our world's greatest problems. Now, I don't want to leave you all with the wrong impression that I had a bad math education, because in fact, I had a great math education. But looking back on it, I couldn't help but wonder if it could have been better. If so, what would have made it better, and exactly how could it have been better? After thinking about this for quite some time, I came to realize that what has helped me most in my math education has been my passion for solving problems. Problem solving teaches us how to approach a challenge analytically, and this skill has helped me overcome so many different obstacles in my life. I'm sure at some point you've all come across a math problem that's intimidating, maybe even one that's so horrendous that you look at it and you think, wow, there's no way I could ever do this. I don't even know where to start. I've certainly seen many of these myself. However, a problem-solving class teaches students how to take this challenge head on and to develop new and innovative solutions to the problems that our world faces. Math is such a wonderful tool for modeling the world around us. And if we can all just stop fearing it and instead embrace its utility, the possibilities for change are endless. Thank you.